Welcome to the Hampton Beach Village District Monday monthly meeting. It's Wednesday, 10 14, 2015. This is the first meeting that we are being uh, videotaped live. Usually it's, uh, it's uh, recorded and then played later. So on Bank Channel 22 for the new equipment. Do we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. Uh, we have uh, Chief Sawyer and Chief Ayotte have uh, agreed to come and give us some information about what's going on on the beach and what we need to do to be uh, helpful to them. Um, and if you want to get up and kind of give us an overview of what's going on, you can take turns and. Uh, if there's anything we can do to help with, we're here for you. Uh, good evening, and again, thank you for the invitation. Uh, we've appeared here on a regular basis, and maybe it's something we can consider moving forward, maybe pre-season and post-season to go over some of the things that might be of mutual, mutual interest. That would be great. Um, I just gave my quarterly review to the Board of Selectmen on last Monday, so I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of statistical data. Just to give you an overview, it was a, a busy summer for us. Um, as we know, over the last several years, recruitment has been difficult for law enforcement nationally and in, in the state, and we're no different. Uh, our part-time ranks who we rely on uh, for that summer operation are down significantly. Uh, we are allowed up to 70 officers uh, part-time, but we're down to 28 working part-timers uh, at the end of the season. So we have actually begun our recruiting process for next year. We're already uh, partially through that. We ran a test back on October 4th. Uh, we had 67 folks come in and take a test. We were down to 13. It's a very rigorous process. Um, the Hampton Police Department has a great reputation for our training that we give our part-time officers, and we ask the same of them that we do our full-time officers. It's a, it's a rigorous screening process. It's a written test, physical agility testing, oral board, and we're at the process now where we're down to polygraphs, psychological exams, and thorough backgrounds, which are very, very intrusive. Uh, we ask a lot of personal questions, and we expect honest answers. So we get the numbers down pretty quickly when we get into that uh, level. So we're down to 13 candidates for the class of 2016 uh, for our part-time officers. Uh, I do expect some more turnover. Uh, I have some older uh, part-timers that have indicated this may have been their last summer. Uh, I also experience an attrition rate uh, with the newer part-timers. As I said uh, before, recruitment is a significant issue nationally. And while we do a great job uh, vetting people out, the other departments around us, like Manchester and Nashua, know we do a good job of that. And they pay attention. And so when somebody walks in the door to apply for a full-time position with those departments, they know the quality of background we've done, and they became a, become a very desirable candidate that usually goes to the top of the list. Uh, so we do lose a lot of officers after a summer to, to Manchester, Nashua, Salem, Derry, State Police. There's uh, a number of part-timers everywhere. So that is really the biggest issue I have right now, is maintaining a, profession, a professional staff, but sufficient numbers of them. Uh, our training cadre is known throughout the state for their proficiency with the firearms and the use of force issues. Uh, that you know, nationally you, you see stories all the time about people being upset with how officers are handling situations. Our officers go up and actually teach at the police academy and assist the academy staff in areas like uh, vehicle operations and firearms and use of force. So I think we have a pretty good handle on the, uh, the level of the training we're doing. It's the number of people coming in the door that seems to be the, the constant problem we're facing. With that, we have to find other ways to do things. Uh, we, we, entered into an agreement with the HBAC, the Hampton Beach Area Commission, at the end of the year uh, for some traffic control uh, crosswalk direction that I felt was very successful. Uh, it's a program I plan to continue next year, again, based on staffing and funding. Um, it's one of these things where if we have officers at those key areas and we utilize technology and other methods that we can try to use what commonly referred to as force multipliers. Um, one of the issues that we've looked at, I may be looking to uh, those precinct for some help, is more of that crowd control fence. Uh, we introduced that about five years ago uh, in sections from the casino north to try to keep the folks out of the street during the 4th of July holiday. After speaking with some of the businesses down here, um, I think it, it's a more widely accepted practice, and we may experiment with using that on more occasions and more of it. 
uh, moving forward to next year, which would relieve officers, uh, or at least help the officers, with that area of pedestrians walking out under the roadway and the traffic control, which, you know, the traffic jams down here on a Saturday and Sunday are pretty significant. But whatever we can do to try to expedite that traffic would be in everybody's best interest. So with that, I'll take any questions or any other uh, information people want to offer that we could try to improve the service. Have you, I, I, in the past, um, there's, there's one particular officer I know about, he's an excellent officer, he's very well trained, he was a part-time officer from Salem, uh, John Tomasi. Is there, is there um, a way of getting some of these retired, uh, young retired officers, I mean, he's relatively young, to, to, to do part-time? Is there some type of incentive we could do? Is there something that, Many of our that you don't have to train them to? Yeah, most of our retirees stay with us. Um, they stay in some capacity working part-time. I think I believe I have six or seven Hampton PD retirees working for many of them were sergeants, which is a, it, it's just a great uh, level of training that you get in a part-time position. Officer, uh, Officer Tomasi was a sergeant in Salem. Uh, that was a great grab. Uh, the problem we have now is with the changes, the 2011 changes to the retirement system makes it more difficult to do that. If somebody retires from a, uh, an entity that is part of the New Hampshire retirement system, they are capped uh, at 32 hours a week that they can work for any other entity that's in the retirement system, and that's combined. So I have one officer uh, part-time that works for me also. I have a number of officers that work for me uh, that also work for other entities that are in the retirement system. One works up at one account of high school, but he also works for me. So in that time period at the beginning of the season and at the end of the season, he's limited as to the hours he can work for me, um, really literally to the three shifts he's required, um, simply because he can't cross over that line without being penalized somehow by the retirement system. So it's a great place to draw from. It's just limited uh, because of those changes. And so we're, we're trying to work on some of that to, to change the language. Hopefully we can open that up a little more because retirees are a great source for our part-time officer corps. I, I just can tell you, I think you did a great job this summer. I think traffic was uh, the way you handled it, help with the HBAC and uh, doing some projects like that. It was, it was a huge difference. Uh, and just keep doing what you're doing. We're going to try. Again, it's just uh, it's funding, and uh, it's just one of those things I would encourage anybody that's got concerns to make sure that, you know, the town meeting, show up and be heard. Show up at the meetings and be heard so people understand, especially the people down here at the beach that see it every day. You know, a lot of people don't see that every day. They, they may not come down on the weekends because they don't want to deal with the crowds, but those of us that are here and dealing with it, you need to be a voice. You need to get up at the podium and let people know how important this is. Uh, to move forward, that we have to keep finding the right people to work down here that can meet our standards, but sufficient number of them. And that, that, you know, that takes money. And so we are going to be looking for some help in that area. So if there are any other questions, I'm more than willing to answer. We do allow people in the audience to, to, to ask. It's not, you don't have to wait for public comment. I have a, I have a question. Um, I came on the town website that you were hiring They would not be sworn personnel. Uh, we, we've done this on several occasions where we bring in uh, some folks that just go out and ride the bicycles uh, go up to the North Shore and down the beach principally, but they're, they're authorized to go down uh, to write parking tickets. Now, our intention with them to hire a four or five for the supervisor. We were able to hire a supervisor because he's a gentleman that has done it for us in the past and works as a volunteer in the community. So, with us, it doesn't matter what position you hold in the police department, you still have to go through a thorough background check. Because you are going to be in an area uh, uh, where you're exposed to confidential information. You may see people coming in and out of the building that are working with us or juveniles. So we still have to do a, a, a thorough background check uh, before we let them come into the building. Uh, and unfortunately, with the time frame, the only one we were able to get in front of with that is the supervisor. Now, he went out and did a great job because as I, as I presented my statistics, I'll get into that one part of it. Um, we're up 45% in our parking tickets for the, for the third quarter compared to last year. That's significant. I mean, we went from 586 tickets to 1,062 compared to the same quarter. And the town gets that money. Yes, those are town municipal parking tickets. Um, it's not like when we write a we write a speeding ticket, 
the town of Hampton gets none of that. That that goes to the state, and it's, you know, it's divvied up in certain places, like the court system, the police academy. These strictly come to the town of Hampton. Um, so that was one man made a huge difference. Um, I'm hoping that we can get ahead of that program once we get past town meeting. Uh, if the budget is sufficient, uh, then I plan on moving forward with hiring three or four folks to begin that program as soon as we start our summer season. Could you hire people like that for, for directing traffic, or do they have so to be directing officer? traffic? Um, there's a lot of different thoughts on that, and I've given consideration to it of hiring civilians to help with traffic control. But that would also involve issues with collective bargaining agreements, and it's just not something I'm ready to do yet. I, I much prefer having that uniformed police officer out there. I think it makes a difference. Uh, I think having an officer out there that while he's directing traffic and dealing with the crosswalks, I think it gives a sense of security to people that they see them there. And then if there is a problem in those crowded areas that there's an officer immediately present, whereas somebody that's a civilian traffic control can only call in the problem. Um, I've seen civilians doing traffic in other places, like North Conway used to do that quite a bit, but they didn't deal with the crowds. They only de dealt with vehicle traffic. They didn't have the crowds on the side. And I think we have a combined issue of vehicle traffic and pedestrian traffic. And I think that takes a sworn officer to deal with. If you had the sworn officer and then one of these civilians on the sidewalk stopping the people, but the officer was there, you might be able to work them together? We do that with the um, seafood fest. Right. You notice at H Street, with that intersection, that's, that's a multi-task issue. So we have an officer there dealing with the traffic, but we do have civilian volunteers dealing with the pedestrians during those peak areas. That's certainly something we can consider again, but there's a lot of things that come into that as to how we can do it, what training they have, because New Hampshire is one of the few states that actually have rules on flagmen. They have to actually have training. You can't, as a regular course of business, you can't just throw anybody in a vest up there to direct traffic. They actually have to go through. And it's not a hard course, but it's, a, it's an online course that they would have to go through if we were to adopt a program like that. Um, right now, my main goal is to get the sworn officers up to the level they need to be at, even absent that, I'm, I'm down sufficiently that I have to really make a press on recruitment. Uh, so I anticipate I may have to run another test uh, to get for this class that we're moving towards in 16. And as you may remember, uh, a number of the officers came out at the end of the year, went to a summer academy for us. Uh, we, we hosted a New Hampshire Police Standards and Training part-time academy. These folks just went to the academy to get the certification. They came out in August. Our intention had been to utilize them next summer. We actually pressed five of them into duty earlier that were available to help with a traffic issue. We gave them a, a modified uh, internal course because we usually do 100, at least 100 hours uh, with our folks of our own training besides the academy. We got that down to where there was sufficient, the training was sufficient to put them out there for simply doing traffic control. Um, I'm planning on trying to do a second class next year, but instead of the summer, we'll do it in the fall when the academy is hosting the no, the no one to uh, build the summer academy. So we're going to try to do the fall academy with some folks, and those folks will come back to us in the fall and summer of 17. Okay. It's, it's going to be a constant recruiting issue. It's it just we're trying to compete with people that are offering full-time jobs. So we're going to have a lot of revolving door, but I still don't believe we can lower our standards. I think we still have to bring in the best we can and wish them the best when they leave us in a year or two, and hopefully we can grab a few ourselves because we are ripe for some change in our full-time ranks. We have a lot of folks that are at that age of retirement and considering those things as we progress forward. So I full-time faces also. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. Um, you Temporary fencing. Oh, crowd control fencing? I have a small amount in there now. Uh, fencing really isn't that expensive. It's not that hard, so I'm, I'm just going to try to piece me. I'm going to pick up pieces where I can, and I'm also going to go out and look to see if I can find some uh, donations to try to help with some of it. Right, okay. I put some in the budget. You'll see that uh, when we go through the budget committee process. You'll see some money in there. It's not a big number, um, but as I've looked at the way things are trending with recruitment, and, and we have to find another way to utilize uh, other manners of dealing with things besides the sworn officer, and the fencing has been a successful yeah. way to deal with it. Really so I, I plan on uh, expanding it. Uh, you know, in my travels, I recently came back from a trip to Nashville, Tennessee, and they have a, a street there called Broadway. If you've ever been there, uh, uh, it's Hampton Beach on steroids. There's a hundred, there's 170 bars in a four-block area, and they police it different because of the number of officers who would take to handle that. 
they use that fencing to its maximum because they have the bars on both sides of the street as opposed to us just on the one side. And that whole four block area, there's that crowd control fencing on both sides and only open at the crosswalks. And they're also very vigilant uh, enforcing the crosswalks. In Tennessee, if you don't use the crosswalk at the appointed time with the light system, it's a hundred dollar fine, and they, they write them very liberally. You know, they, you walk down there, you'll see people getting tickets for uh, what you know commonly is referred to as jaywalking. People that are running out when it's not signaled for them to use it, they, they write tickets for it. I did see uh, that officers. Would pay for another officer. Huh? At this beach, that would pay for another officer. Um, the problem you have is is the the law the laws are different from state to state. In the state of New Hampshire, people got to understand that it's not illegal to cross the street without a crosswalk. Don't say that. Well, it's the law, you know, and I want, I want, I think if people are informed, they'll understand better with, with here and because we do a lot of crosswalk enforcement on grants, and what it is is, if there's a pedestrian in a crosswalk, vehicles must yield. Absent the crosswalk, the pedestrian is required to yield to the vehicle, and a lot of people don't don't know that. You see a lot of upset people trying to take a left-hand turn off Ocean Boulevard. And the pedestrians get mad because they don't stop for them. Well, most of those wetted streets do not have crosswalks across them. So the vehicle actually has the right of way. But people get upset because they believe that it's the pedestrian. So that we, we have to deal with the nuances of our own laws as opposed to what people think the common perception is. And we try to educate people the best we can and, and where we cannot. I'm a big advocate of education as opposed to the, the hammer all the time. Um, but there are those circumstances where you, you have no option. You have to write summons and some tickets. And my big one is vehicles not yielding to people in crosswalks is, is a pet peeve of mine. Um, the pedestrians, it's hard to educate them because I think there's so many people that come from other places than here that don't understand our laws. Um, so we're just trying to work on that. That would be an area where those critical areas where if we had folks there that could keep the pedestrians back while we move the vehicle traffic <coughs> and coordinate it that way might be a, an option. I definitely heard a couple of officers telling people, you know, as they're crossing, please use the crosswalks next time, and they, they were, and the people were, yeah, sorry, you're right, blah, blah, blah. So people were getting it, you know. It, it, it well, I think it's a funny thing. We take for granted where we are, um, you know, but when you go on vacation, you start thinking about, you know, I, I look at people, and I try to remind the officers, they're on vacation. They're not thinking like we are. They're thinking about, you know, where's the next show we're going to? I'm supposed to meet my friends at this bar or go to this place. They're on vacation. They're a little bit more relaxed in their attitude about things where we're here working and we get hyper-focused on those things that we know cause problems here at the beach. Most people walking down the street with an open container of beer don't think it's a big deal. And in the world of things, it's not. But if we allow that to go unfettered, it becomes a large problem. Okay? And, and, and one of the big areas that I did highlight this summer and I'm going to continue is the overservice of alcohol to people in our establishments. Um, I think the business has had a pretty good year, um, but one of the problems we do continue to see is people that we come upon that are highly intoxicated that we have to take into custody because they're not able to fend for themselves or they get involved in some other problem and they're under the influence and we take every effort to identify where were you drinking. Uh, we've got a great partnership with the New Hampshire uh, Liquor Enforcement Bureau. Uh, I gave them a desk in our building so that they're here more often so that it's a presence and it uh, sometimes, you know, a wake-up call sometimes to some of the uh, the vendors we have down here at the beach, and a lot of times it's the individual service. Uh, you know, it comes down to individual individual accountability. You deal with a bar owner; they can't be everywhere. Even though they're accountable, they can't be everywhere. And it really comes down to education, and again, hiring the right people that you can trust to look out for people. Because you see people walking out of bars at closing time, and they're barely standing. Um, it's a problem, and we need to we need to get a, a handle on it. Uh, we are going to be hosting a hospitality uh, hospitality meeting, uh, co-hosted by the Hampton Police Department and the Hampshire Worker Enforcement Bureau, to to have that discussion with them on what the expectation is and what they can expect if they don't do a better job of it. Um, you know, we've had some issues down here where we've had people hit, killed, this summer almost killed, um, and it's just not acceptable. The fact that yeah. It's, it's, uh, without naming, I, I don't yeah. care about that. Is that something that's going on in all of our establishments down here or is it more frequent uh, a frequently a problem with certain places or is it everybody across the board I would I would say if you you know if we looked at our reports that we're turning over yeah there are some establishments that stand up more than others 
Uh, but it, it, I think it's the nature of the type of establishment they are. It, you know, it's it, some places are restaurants that have a bar. Some places are bars that have a restaurant. You know, it depends what <laughs> yeah, the motif no, is. True. And I'm not being critical of anybody. That's My true. family was in that business for many years. And it doesn't really matter. You still have the same obligation under New Hampshire law. You're not supposed to serve intoxicated patrons. You're, not all, you're supposed to allow them to stay on your premises. They refuse to leave. You're supposed to call the police and we'll remove them. Um, and I know there's a reluctance, reluctance to call the police all the time because it winds up on the police log and it winds up becoming a black eye. But what's worse is when somebody leaves your establishment or gets hurt in your establishment, and now you have a bigger problem than you have because now you have somebody that's actually been injured. Um, and, it, and it's a balance, and we understand that. We're trying to work with people and, again, <coughs> trying to educate and get people to do things willingly as opposed to dragging them to court or before the liquor commission and threatening them with it. The permits, you know, assembly and all those other things that we can do. I'd rather have them do it on their own. It's much more cost effective and it's less time my officers are wasting in court and in hearings. If they do it themselves and we work with them, I think, I think it's better for everybody involved. What's the status of the mounted patrol? The horse? They're still with us. Um, they're, they're much uh, more limited in, uh, than they used to be in years past. Uh, we have two horses, uh, primarily the two riders. Uh, it's, it's changed a little bit. When I rode back in the olden days, there was four officers that were taken full-time officers that were assigned to that for the summer. And the other things that we're involved in now, including the drug enforcement issues, we have an officer off onto a drug task force. I have an officer doing the... Uh, Internet crimes against children. I just don't have the personnel to go back to four horses. Um, I think there's less of a need. Back then, we were, you know, it was obviously a great PR thing as it is today, but also a very legitimate crowd control uh, necessity back in those days. I think things have changed down here at the beach for the better. I think the crowd uh, overall is much more compliant. Uh, there's a much less rowdy behavior that we encounter. I'm not saying it's gone, but you talk to any of the officers who were here in the 90s compared to what it is today, it, it's a much <coughs> tamer beach, and that, that's good for all of us. So the mounted patrol today is, is really more of a PR uh, issue. We'll use them if we needed to um, on those busy nights, but the crowds we get on a Wednesday night, they're here for the fireworks, and then the vehicle traffic seems to really settle down quickly. Um, the restaurants and the, uh, the deck bars are all doing great. I just, the perception that I'm hearing is there's more people staying here as opposed to driving here at night, which is a good thing. They're not getting behind the wheel and drinking, or drinking and getting behind the wheel. Um, but that is a different type of crowd, a different type of mentality. I think that we've raised the bar quite a bit. The state, the town, and the business people have raised the bar of expectations from the people that come here. And I think that's worked well, so I don't really, f I don't think uh, in the, the near future that we're going to be moving the non patrol up to four again. <coughs> pretty stable with what we have, and I'm utilizing retired part-time officers to ride. Folks that were on the unit back in those days are back on the unit again as retirees working part-time for us. And it's been great. Um, I think folk, folks have really received them well. And we're riding more during the daytime as opposed to those days we rode almost exclusively at night. Now they're out during the daytime, principally on Sundays and a lot of Mondays and Tuesdays, trying to get them around to different locations. Um, and then working into the weekends, I just need those personnel for other things uh, besides riding the horses. So we, we try to make the best of it we can, but that's where we're at. What is your feeling about body cameras? That seems to be... That's your body thought. cameras? I am uh, currently working with a manager to present a, uh, a warrant article on that. We are meeting Monday night to discuss warrant articles with the Board of Selectmen. That will be one of the uh, articles I'm seeking. I just feel... Where we are today uh, in society is obviously a very negative vibe in many places uh, towards law enforcement and the government as a whole. And I just, I think if you talk most of the officers, they're all for it. It's simply because what we know back when they st first started using cruiser cameras, it certainly helped officers more than ever hurt them because there are a degree of complaints that do come in against police officers. And with the cameras, it, it's hard to say, you know, you just, okay, you say the officer did this, let's watch the video. And most times, the people that have had, in my experience talking to people that have had these uh, the video systems, the officer didn't do what he was accused of. 
it, it, it vindicates more officers than it ever convicts. On the other hand, if we had an officer that's doing something he shouldn't be doing, maybe he'll think twice about it because he knows he has a camera on and there's a policy, there'll be a policy as to when you have to have it on and, and how it's downloaded um, and how that evidence is stored and collected. Mm -hmm. The problem with it is I think it's a great idea, but it's like anything else. It's the money. It's not cheap. Um, it's a supply and demand. Everybody wants it now. You know, with everything going on in the country today, everybody wants their officers to have cameras now. I do too. It's how much money is it going to cost us. And I don't want to get into the specifics of that right now. I think that's really more appropriate before the board, but I am in favor of them. I think the vast majority of the officers are in favor of it. And if we can get the voters to agree with us, we're going to move forward with that program. And hopefully we can have those cameras, body cameras in place on most of the officers by the summer of 16. That would be great. Thanks. Super. That it? Any other questions? Thank you very much. Sure. Okay. I, I am going to make my weed because I have my 13 year old daughter waiting for me for dinner. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, Chief. Good night. See you in the morning. I just, uh, before you start, I want to thank you and all your fellow firefighters uh, for the great job at the beach view. Um, that could have uh, been completely out of control and it could have been another block scene or another just horrendous scene. And uh, I want to congratulate you guys on the great job. Thank, thank you very you much. Uh, that certainly speaks to the professionalism of the firefighters working here today. Uh, that was an amazing stop. When you consider what that building had to hold, um, I, I don't know the date that it was constructed. It certainly wasn't constructed last week. Um, some of the wood up in the attic there, that's pretty well seasoned. And, um, you know, it, it, they were certainly up against it. That was a third floor fire. For anybody who's carried groceries up the third floor, you know that that's a lot of work. If you're carrying an inch and three quarter hose line up three floors filled with water, it becomes a, a boatload of work. So, uh, thank you very much for the kind words. That was, um, that was the most recent fire. We have had a couple of fires recently, some of them smaller. Um, some of you may have known that we had vehicle fires up at the end of Ocean Boulevard uh, at Cusack at the end of August. So in this past couple of, I would say six or eight weeks, we've had three or four fires, um, and we've been pretty active on that front. To the end of what we're doing, I can tell you that for EMS, we are status quo with last year right now. Uh, with fire calls, we're up by about 150, 160 calls over last year, and last year was our highest year on record. Um, we're also up with fire prevention. As some of you have already come to see me, uh, we've been doing an awful lot of work with fire prevention, and the village precinct certainly has seen a lot of our work out here because you have so much growth and also obviously seasonal businesses. So as they come online, you've seen a lot from our fire prevention office. It's been a very busy year. You guys have been growing significantly. Um, what we I, I presented to you a report indicating that I give to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, this report indicates what our volume is like for permits of assembly, for inspections of uh, cooking hoods, for oil permits, for propane permits. These are all items that require an inspection as well. Uh, recently, we've had the addition of a new fire prevention officer, Will, William Payne, Bill Payne, who's doing a great job. Uh, we have a fire prevention secretary who's keeping the log, and we have new EMS officer, uh, Nate Denio. We've had a lot of change. We have a new captain, a new lieutenant. We have two new positions. So to talk to Chief Sawyer's point where recruitment is an issue for him, it's, a, it's an issue for us as well. With the promotions, we've seen two new open positions. And we have a person who may be medically retiring, which will give us a third position. Uh, in the past, we've run our own tests at great expense. This year, we've changed and we're allowing, um, we're using the state exam as far as written and CPAT, which is the candidate physical agility test. So they all have to pass that. They did in the past as well, but we weren't looking at their written. We were running our own. So this year, we've actually, we're taking the state exam. We're conducting oral boards, and we just placed five of the candidates out of 25 through a physical agility portion yesterday. So it's a skills assessment. Um, we're down to four candidates now for two and a half positions. When the other position opens up, we'll have three positions. So it's a, it's a very hard sell right now to, to get candidates in through the door. Um, police are seeing it from one perspective. We're seeing it from another. But it's a massive glut out there of jobs. If you look at 
people hiring for firefighters. We're hiring for advanced EMTs and paramedics. That's our goal. Um, we're unable to pay for the transition from basic EMT to advanced. It's a, it's a lot of schooling that goes into that. And so we're unable to uh, burden the cost of that right now. So we're looking for those candidates to come in with that training already. So there's where we stand on that. With the Beachview Inn, if I can do a shameless plug for just a minute, um, B and Z down the point. I'd like to thank Bill because Bill, I called Bill and I said we have an engine uh, sitting out here and they were taking care of the scene for us for a little while afterwards. Uh, that fire came in at about 11.58 and those guys were there until about 8.30 at night and he provided supper for us so we certainly do appreciate that and I'd like to throw a thanks out to him. Uh, with fire prevention, some of you may know, especially the business owners in the room, um, we have changed our fee schedule based on the Board of Selectmen's direction. That fee schedule was implemented in February of 2015, and I asked for numbers so that you would have an understanding of what we're going through or what we're seeing for change. And initially, um, it, when we looked at the, the um, revenue generated from last year's permits, 2014, we saw $4,575 for all of the permitting work, all of the inspection work, and everything else that we did in the fire prevention office. This year, with the new fee schedule, we brought in $15,497. Um, I think that it also goes to the fact that the service being provided is superior right now. We're getting turnaround on plans review um, within three to five days. We're doing the inspections, and I was just told tonight that our last uh, permit of assembly has been uh, accomplished uh, almost. It's the fire stations. So I'm waiting on the sprinkler permit. Once we have that, the permits of assembly for the fire stations will be done. And we're current through November and December with that. So this is a big transition for us, and we're certainly excited to, to be up to par on that. Um, this is today was the, the last classes that were seen. Last week was fire prevention week. And we saw 384 kids come from Center School and Sacred Heart. Sacred Heart came in today. Um, but we saw 384 kids come through our program. And the program was geared towards children. And hear the beep where you sleep. So if you've seen that commercial on TV, this is geared towards kids and having smoke detectors in their bedroom and having them understand what it means to get out of the home when they hear that. We saw them come through. They went through the trailer, which was positioned over at our Winnicott Road Fire Station. They walked over for the day and they are for their period in the morning and they went through each of them, each class um, went through that program. So we're real proud of that. This weekend on the 18th from 10 to 2, that's Sunday, I believe, the 18th is Sunday, uh, we have an open house and we're going to have demonstrations put on there, fire extinguishers, we're cutting up a car and we certainly invite the public to come to that. Um, I'd certainly be happy to answer any questions that you might have. <coughs> I always seem to start. So. Um, the, the question I have is the inspections every year. Yes. This is a very big beach issue. Sure is. Uh, before Sea Catch can open, the boardwalk can open, they have to have their inspections. That's true. Um, is there a way it can be spread out so that they, I mean, it's, it's, you, you know it's coming. Yep. Is there a way that they can, <coughs> they can get in early? Well, uh, what we're doing now is we're sending out a letter in advance, about a month in advance, four weeks. Uh, to each of the individual business owners letting them know that they're due. So in that much time, we're requiring them to have their permits for or their inspections for fire sprinklers, for fire alarms, and if they have a hood, their cleaning has to be supplied to us. Uh, in the past, we didn't accept that electronically. We currently do now. So if it's email or if it's fax, we'll get it and we'll put it with the report. Um, when it comes to seasonal properties especially, we actually have to have people in the building and working there so that they can have the floor plan set up. So that the, um, you know, we, if, if they dismantle any of the cooking hoods or if the cooking f uh, appliances are not in place, then we can't inspect it. So the inspection has to take place when they're ready to open, when they're good to go. So if they're open year round? If they're open year round, yep. Are they inspected at the same time every year or can it be spread out where they're, they're done early and instead of being I'll use Wally. Like sure. Just Instead of being checked in May when the, or April when the sea catch and the boardwalk and the others are all being, can we do them? Can you do them earlier in February and get them through and, and, and just we're, we're make your life easier? And sure. Well, we're, we're trying to do that. Uh, the problem being that, you know, if you were the business owner and you just spent the money to have the 
fire sprinkler company come in, and I think I just paid four hundred seventy-five dollars for the fire stations, and then the fire alarm companies come in. They're giving you a certification for a year. And as a matter of fact, the elevator. I just got the Pine State elevator. You guys are good to go up and down the elevator. Um, <laughs> the the elevator uh, certificate also comes in. Those are good for a year. When it comes to elevators in particular, they won't certify until the month that it's due. They won't come back unless it's a renewal. So or you know starting over. Um, there's a certain cost factor that goes to the business owners to call us in and say, yeah, we want to do this earlier. If they don't have the documentation necessary, if they're only getting nine months and they've spent for a year, <coughs> then next year they're getting, you know, they're paying twice as much because they have to have their permits and all of their inspections done in advance of our coming through the door to do the inspection. Um, I think, and, you know, forgive me if there's anybody in the room who didn't feel this, but this year our timeliness for inspections was certainly, uh, I think that we were on track. And when it came to May, we had a ton of inspections and they were all done within a timely fashion. Some of them are new businesses that uh, had never been inspected before, so they went from soup to nuts, if you will, uh, beginning to end. It wasn't just a uh, walk through and say, okay, this is the same conditions I saw last year. This is all new conditions. We were able to accomplish all that we needed to. Uh, we're not in any way changing or relaxing the code. We're enforcing the code 100%, but we're just doing it in a much more timely fashion. Great. Any questions from the audience? Ma'am. Yes, Chief, Hello. I wondered um, if you could give us a brief update on overdoses and the use of Narcan and if you're seeing a significant increase or is it level <coughs> off or what? Sure. We certainly are. Uh, when compared to other communities, I don't think that we are on the higher end, okay? Um, when I talk to my sister departments, um, especially larger cities, uh, they're certainly seeing a, a very great volume of it. We're getting our <coughs> um, in large volumes because we have a, a opiate overdose problem in this town. But that's no different than any other town, I don't think. Um, the larger cities, Manchester, Nashua, they see it in greater volume than we do. And when you compare populations, uh, especially summertime populations, one would anticipate that we would see more. And we don't. I think that Chief Sawyer did a good job of telling you that this is a different beach, especially considering, you know, I, I, he talked about the olden days, and I like to kid him about that, because I wasn't here in the olden days, and <laughs> he was. Some uh, of you were. <laughs> some of you were. But, you know, the olden days. Uh, if you look back to the 90s, older than him. the beach was different. <laughs> Not to me. I was in high school. Um, <laughs> so when we talk about the, the problems that he saw back in the 1990s, and what the beach was like this year, and I think anybody who spent five minutes on the beach, this year was an, a tremendous amount of families out there. There were kids. There were. It was a very different feel for me. And this is my fourth year here. This was a very different feel for me than it was even when I started. And in seeing that transition, um, the population that's coming to visit, we're not seeing that heroin problem. You know, we we're seeing it. I think that every community is seeing it. You know, and it, it's across board. It's not just here at the beach. It's it's all throughout the town. It's all throughout. It's whether you go to Northampton, Portsmouth, Greenland, any of the communities, they're all having a similar problem. But we are dealing with it on a daily basis, or every other day at least. Yep. Very yeah? On the 18th, You're welcome, will the boat stations be open? Or? It will, well, this station is manned with um, a lieutenant and two firefighters. They'll come up town for the day, for that morning. They'll still be responding down here, first due. Um, but we will be up there. As far as the open house side of things, open house will be at the Winnicunnet Road Station headquarters. Okay, we have all of our, we have the fire prevention trailer there. We have the car up there. There's going to be demonstrations for the kids. Um, that's where we'll be located. We have the, the means to do that. So, There's one thing that I'd like to thank the precinct for, if it's possible. Uh, I did talk to Mr. Rage uh, several weeks ago, and he was kind enough to allow us. Some of you saw there was a, a great contingent of ambulances uh, on Wednesday last week. We had an MCI drill, so that's a mass casualty incident. And I had talked to Mr. Rage and requested permission to use your parking lot for our staging area. We used the town parking lot for the actors, if you will. They were nursing students. Um, and all of our controllers for the exercise. We had a planned exercise for nerve agent release during Seafood Fest, which I never want to see. But we did have, uh, we had 57 mock patients plus two from the CST team, and all were transported in a timely fashion to the hospital. So in doing so, we conducted a great exercise, lots of learning points, and we took that home 
But we thank the precinct for allowing us to use your parking. Any, anytime. Appreciate it. Anytime. Thank you. Any other questions? Could you share a little bit of how the drill came off? Were you satisfied? Or I, I can't tell you how satisfied I was with the professionalism of the providers. We worked hand in hand with other departments um, and also with private ambulance. So that's something we don't do on a routine basis. Uh, we had, let's see, we had four ambulances from Action. We had four ambulances from Lifeline. We had a Hampton Falls ambulance, Hampton Ambulance, obviously, Exeter, uh, Seabrook, and I do believe, I believe that's it. Going off memory. So if I missed anybody out there, I do apologize. So in, in working in concert together, um, each of the ambulances had a role. We were triage and loading, which means that our initial officers had to show up, take control of the scene, and then decide who was the sickest, move them along to the ambulance, and then the loading officer had to get the ambulances off scene. We were very generously uh, assisted with the casino ballroom, and Mr. Fleming helped us out there. When we used the parking lot, we created a decon area so that a, a simulated decon, nobody got wet that day, but they went in and the, the kids who were affected were given decon and uh, decontaminated. Then they were moved to ambulances, and then they were shuttled to different hospitals. Four hospitals participated. The two local ones saw ambulances, so Exeter and Portsmouth got ambulances from all of us, and I think that that was handled very efficiently. Um, and it certainly showed the professionalism of all the crews that were responding that day. Um, for the further hospitals, we also transported to Frisbee and Wentworth Douglas. But for the point of the exercise, we just didn't have enough ambulances for that, so we used buses. So you might have seen some of the buses. And then on the return trip, I saw that uh, some of the nursing students returned on a trolley, which was different. I didn't expect that. So <laughs> that was a nice feature on Hampton Beach. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, sir. If I have a question, do you, doesn't the sheriff's department get involved? The sheriff's department? Yeah. Uh, for, the, for the point of the exercise, they did yeah. it this time. Um, because we, we, the, we were looking for uh, moving product for the strategic national stockpile. Yeah. Um, the sheriff's department wasn't part of the role this time. Uh, in some cases, they are. Hmm. For Seafood Fest, they were here. Yep. Uh, CST team had a presence here. They had a presence this Seafood Fest as well. Typically, you know, they're, they're new to us. Uh, the Sheriff's Department is not new to us. They know how we operate. They, they work in concert with Chief Sawyer. So, so I have a question. You sure. had Lifeline and sure. Action. So would you the one, would you outsource for more if you needed more help? Without question. Um, and so that you understand why that played out and how it did, uh, it was up to me to uh, go to the area fire chiefs yep. and ask for their assistance for the MCI drill. Yep. And the two hospitals that are our local providers, they went to their contracted services and s as part of their hospital agreements, right. they provide for exercise. So we got hospital um, agreements to give us the ambulance, basically. Yeah. That's what we do too. Yep. In Cambridge, some will Belmont, Watertown. Sure. You know, and we just, we had not to cut your shop, but we just no. had an MCI drill also. In the same thing, but I, I was lot? concerned that yep, I was concerned that you, you'd actually go to Massachusetts and get our guys. Certainly, uh, you know, and it's kind of funny. This was um, this was discussed uh, a year ago. It started in November last year, and when we just started discussing it, we even talked about Anna Jakes. Anna Jakes is certainly a hospital we would transport to. Yep. But they're over the border, and for the duration of the exercise, which was literally an hour and forty-five minutes by completion. Um, did we want to have three hospitals to transport it to plus the two distant ones? So we simulated uh, transport to Massachusetts. We didn't use any mass companies for the day. We did, however, for the fire. But in a real MCI, oh, you would question. have to go to New Report. Oh, you'd no have question. To go to in you'd have to go everywhere. You know that. Absolutely. But that's, uh, that's all I want to know. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Certainly. Yep. Excellent. Anything we should be looking for? Warrant articles or uh, anything I coming up? Are you going for any equipment? Or? I am, as a matter of fact. We're going for. I, I have a lot. Uh, we were given. <laughs> uh, we're, we were given direction this year, and based on moving forward, I, I supplied a level funded budget plus uh, 1.64 percent. Anybody who saw the board of selectmen meeting knows that I requested 1.64. Um, for the reason, the the bulk of that one and a half percent increase is the. The utility costs that I'm feeling now having two new buildings. So we have heat, we have lights, we have um, water, we have sprinkler buildings now. As everybody who was in the precinct hall when the building was over there knows, it was not a sprinkler <laughs> building. 
Uh, the old building at 1 and 40 Winnicott kind of was not sprinklered. Now we have two sprinkler facilities. So in order to have that, it's costing me $9,600 a year in water, and we're budgeted $1,300. So in order to do it right, I put the budget forward with the cost increase for that. Um, when it comes to warrant articles, though, the equipment necessary, we've got a couple of things, and I'm going to be talking to the Board of Selectmen on the second on this, but the ones that are going to be out there that, that I really need to, to have people weigh in on, um, we have uh, an SCBA filling station, so uh, the air that we wear on our backs when we're going into a burning building. Um, we have our own filling station, and the machine that we have was purchased in 1987 okay. by the Seacoast Fire Chiefs Association. They gave it to us in the 90s, and we maintained it from then on, and we owned it. But 1987 technology, this is a large machine, and the electronics are the last component. They said that we can't service it if the electronics can go. Um, let's face it, it's certainly seen better days. Um, our two command cars are exceedingly old. They're 12 and 13 years old, and the rocker panels on both are now rusted, and um, Deputy Kennedy, you can put a whole fist in the side of his door right now. So we do have some equipment in there, um, and I I'm only looking for what we absolutely need, nothing more. So I understand that the townspeople have certainly felt the fire department in the last couple of years with two new buildings and now a fire engine, which, by the way, we've now um, finalized plans on. So anybody who has been watching, we had a fire engine warrant article last year, and it was voted yes, and it was $615,000. Uh, we're getting a Pierce uh, Impel puck pumper, and this is going to be an absolutely top-notch, high-quality piece of equipment. We get to see the operation and how they manufacture it. They're absolutely making it to our standards, and I could not be happier with the equipment. So that's what we get now, and we're looking forward to uh, the future. All right, great. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, and, uh, and again, we'd I'll like to... And we'd like to say we're going to invite we're going to invite you back in the spring, and, and, and that way to, to go over the same idea. Do the same thing. All right, absolutely. Wonderful. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, thank you. Okay, um, I should have done this before, but I knew um, they they were kind of in a hurry. But I I, I want to take a moment of silence for we we just lost two of our um, village district residents, uh, and two residents that have done a lot for the village district and the town. It was John Christensen and Glenn Farrell, so I'd like to take a moment of silence. Thank you. Um, the Hampton Beach Area Commission uh, rep is, is in, we are in need of a new appointment for the Hampton Beach Area Commission. Um, I have heard from um, um, Commissioner Ladd is interested in it, and uh, I had also heard um, I had talked to uh, Rich Renier, and I hadn't heard from him he was going to send me something, but I haven't heard he, from him. I'm sorry, Chuck. It was in the mail that I picked up yesterday. Oh, okay. okay? There it, it was a letter in there, and I forgot to bring it with me. Okay. It's at my house, but he, he is interested in. All right. Is he interested in being reappointed? All right. So um, we have to discuss what we think. There is a lot going on with the Hampton Beach Area Commission right now. They're doing a transportation study. We're spending a lot of money on coming up with some ideas on traffic, parking, um, transportation, transportation study. I guess that makes sense, right? And um, they're doing a lot with the town. So um, I want to open it up to the two of you to talk about it and, and see what you think. Well, knowing that, um, I mean, I would have expected that Mr. India would want to do this again. But I have to say that um, considering the, the, uh, the floodplain issues and the CRS rating system that Bob is involved in, I really would like to see him on that board. That's just my personal feeling. Uh, and you know, I think it might be, if he's willing to do it, I think it would be a good thing for all of us. What do you think, Bob? Well, I, I'd be willing to do it, but I don't feel I should say anything other than that at right. this time. All right. Um, well, I, I, I'd like. I think there's a lot going on. I think it's good that the commissioners, that a fellow commissioner, wants to be on it. So I'm. I, I will make a motion that 
we uh, appoint Bob Ladd. And um, if I get a second. I'll give you a second on that. I really feel strongly about it. I think so. So all in favor? And you'll have to abstain. I'll abstain. All right. All right. Um, old business. I'm going to start with old business because I, I know that uh, I, I get a lot of phone calls. Um, the new parking lot at, at Clues. We are, um, I think it looks great. They did a good job. The fence is up, but it's not finished. Nope. All right, and the fence will be finished. We're, we're coming further up. As, as soon as Unitil is done, we had to wait until they finished with their poles and everything else. So the fence is going to come up further, halfway up. And then there is going to be the fencing that is out here in this parking lot where it's roped off will be there, the pilings. And, uh, it, and, and is it going to go all the way from that, to from the, the fencing, end. all the way down, around, and all the way down? So it's going all the way to the end. To Ashworth. So okay, there, there so will the be no entrance or exit. would be from Ashworth. From Ashworth, and that's what we had discussed. And then, and Mike misspoke last month, and um, I wanted to talk to the fence company to make sure at the meeting. So I didn't want to make it this okay. this huge issue at last month's meeting because I wanted to just make sure right. what we had discussed with the fence company was was going to happen. And um, I think it looks great. I think the the, the whole parking lot looks good. Uh, yeah, and and then the why are we letting people park in there if they're not paying for it? I mean, cars, when I was on the way here, three cars were parked in there. Right, and, and we're, the sign is there, and we will be... Um, what are we going to do in the winter time? Everybody's going to park in there. Well, it's signed there, and we'll, if we start towing, you tow one or two, you're gonna, they're going to find out pretty quick, because it says there. Yeah, we might be able to come up with something or no, put something in front of it. We're just trying to get it open. Get, we were trying to get it open... And yeah. Get it working and and get the get it done. I mean, the buildings that were there were not pretty buildings that were there, and I no, think the no, lot no, looks no. good. The not neighbors, you know, we know. Yeah, and and it's 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 bright, but uh, we've we've dimmed the lights. We've put um, shades on the lights so that that the the lot and the street corners are lit. But hopefully, we're not affecting people's houses anymore. Uh, the first day it went up, I, one of the neighbors was blinded right, in their right, living room, right, and, right. and uh, they that. called us, and we immediately had Unitil there. So uh, we're not, we're trying to be, we're trying to do good for the beach and be good neighbors. And um, but so you're we're not going to take that big light down. You're going to leave it there, right? What, the way the light's there now, I think it's all going to be that way. I think it's perfect. Right. This is at um, between Tuttle and Fellows Ave the parking lot so if you go down the back boulevard there used to be clues furniture and hardware store do you remember where that is okay so on the bottom of between o and p, o and p yeah. street yeah okay so down that end of the beach that's a, a busy area of a lot of residents and there's a lot of people visiting and there's no parking down that way so this is this is something we've, we've worked on any so. time frame at all on when we may have the fence all done and the rope according and according to what I I just had it, I, I'm <laughs> thinking it's um, the middle of next week. Really, everything? I don't know. This is what I'm. <laughs> I'm not promising anything, but it's getting but done you know soon. What? We, a lot of people were concerned and and upset because they thought I think that that was the end of it. Yeah. And now you know, um, and that we had not fulfilled what we said we were going to do. Right. And um, it's a work in progress. It really is. <laughs> but what are we going to do in the winter time? You going to let people park in there? Not going to plow it. It's not going to be plowed. Oh, you're not? No. Oh, good thinking. That's a great. That's great. And it's signed that there's no parking so, allowed. So the so. town will just take all the snow when they come down, fellows, and dump it, it into there. our parking lot. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's okay. And what's yeah. nice is I don't think we're going to have it. There's no. Uh, there's no hot top there. It's it's, it's, it's all stone, and I don't think we're going to have any issues with uh, flooding or anything like that. So it's actually great. Yeah. Guy right. across the street doesn't think so, though. He can't make any more money for parking. <laughs> there's plenty. There's plenty of money to be made for parking. Yeah. I'm well, questioning about a couple was. of things on that. One of them is there's a mailbox there. Is that our mailbox that's yeah. on that? That's right. Did you see? Yeah, I did. Is that I, ours? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we don't know if it's our mailbox. 
Well, it's not mine, so maybe so it's yours. So we didn't put a mailbox there. No. So, so was it there packing from the clues, there, I would or is someone that used that? Yeah. Have to go, no? I thought it was to put the money in. If they were <laughs> yeah. That's a good idea. Why not? Yeah. yeah. That's what that little shed. I think that that needs to be oh, kind of discussed. Shed kind of idea? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So there's a small and shed the, going and in, the bathroom. So which will have a, a bathroom. More work oh. Before you can actually put all those stuff. Oh, it will be a lot. we purchased the shed, but he did. Didn't I just sign? Is that what I signed? Yeah. So, so <laughs> Sheds USA or whatever. Yeah. So the, the shed. Reed's Ferry. Reed's Ferry. Thank you. Sorry. So when we did the negotiation for this building, I made sure that the shed that was to go on this <coughs> lot would be, the town would, would pay for with the whole negotiation. And then when this was done, the, the chief, Sil chief Silver at the time said, I'll get you a shed, I'll pay for the shed, but I don't have any money yet, I'm going to put it in the next year's budget. And it's all in the agreement and everything else. And then um, he retired and we have a new chief. So then I went and I pulled out the agreement and I went and talked to, um, to um, Mr. Mr. Welch and uh, Fred Welch and he... Um, he says, if we had the agreement, we'll take care of it. So I, I pulled up the agreement, sent it to him, and uh, so the new shed that's going to go there is is going is to be, the town is going to be paying for that shed because they owe us the money for this shed. So it's just so kind of a... Are they going to do it before the winter comes or no? It's are looking you? for December, right? Yeah, now. it's coming. I just talked to Mike about it. It'll be oh. here, I believe, the end of this month. Oh. This month, like this month. Yeah. Wow. There's a bathroom. Does Reed set shed. it up when they come? Oh, yep. Yeah. yeah, but there's a bathroom also. So you got to dig underneath that before you go. Well, no, I've talked to the town. Are we going to turn that up? Uh, uh, what? You can't leave that on, right? That would be well, freezing. No, you just no it's going to be connected. It's not going to be yeah. turned on. It'll uh, be okay. drained and taken. So we have, it's another, another yeah. project. All right. Well, like Mary Louise knows that we will have a bathroom. Yeah. Yes, that's good. She'll be happy to hear that. I know. She's asking more than <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there you go. All right. Um, any old business, Maureen? I don't think so. Um, I don't think so. Bob? No, I don't have any either. Okay. So what? I don't know if you consider this old or not, but do you have any idea when the signs are going to be put up on the side streets west of uh, Ashworth? The signs. How do fire lanes and no parking. Even oh. the parking issue? That's a town issue. I, them, I can I try know. to find out, but I have no idea. That's definitely a town issue. They changed. They changed the one way, so maybe that's mm. happening next. I, I I really don't know. Which one way? Well, well, they have one way. One going way. Down all down. they were all going down. Now they're every other again. So for which side they're going to be on? No, all no, the no, the other. All the side streets. The P Street, Q, all were down streets. No, I'm talking about like you understand, Avenue, right? Yeah. But what I'm saying is they just did those <laughs> this week. They just pulled all the barrels off. So I'd say it's oh. probably a process happening. But that's definitely a town issue. I, d I don't know that one. So I can try to they find don't out. Know either. Oh, all right. <laughs> I can try to find out. But, uh, and that's the next thing I'm going to talk about is um, our monthly meeting is traditionally the second Wednesday of the month. And uh, next month is Veterans Day. So in observance of Veterans Day, we have decided to have it the third Wednesday of the month. So it'll be November 18th. Uh, we talked about this a few months ago, but I just want to remind everybody because it's next month, and I have th it is on the town's website. It has been posted. It will be November 18th, so just remind everybody on that one. Um, new business, Maureen? Well, um, I think um, one of the things I, I think we should mention is that we are going to, as a board, uh, split up our visitations to the budget committee, correct? That's correct. So that, that, you know, that Bob won't have to do all of them, then we will split them up and we will each take a few turns and go to the budget meetings. That's the first thing. I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've already decided we're going to do that because it's only fair. Um, and also, the Christmas parade, if I may. Mm -hmm. Are we? Shall we? 
Um, I wish Glenn were here. I don't know where he is, but um, <coughs> we need to talk about that. Talk and no, I that. didn't uh, get in touch because I decided I would. I think we should meet with him and other things anyway. With the, what will happen, I have to tell you, is that I talked to Glenn about the trailer. Yes. And the trailer that we own. Yes. Okay, that does belong to the village right. district. Presently, it has a plate on it from Glenn. The plate runs out on November 1st, the end of this month. Right. So, if we're going to do the parade, <coughs> you have to decide, you know, pretty that soon. Be because, because I've got to register it up at the town, and right. I've got to put insurance on it with um, Marl. Okay, so. Well, I don't think we haven't heard anything from. Uh, last year we did a sand sculpture, so let's, do we want to do a sand sculpture again, or do we want to put the famous continentals on the, on the, uh, well that's what I'm bringing up right now, do we want to do something like that, the continentals have been part of Hampton Beach for years, that's right. and it might be something nice to have a, a band of music, Hampton Beach, uh, with the, the and, and we do have all of, we do have posters, yeah, we can work on some. don't we have them? <laughs> Yes, well, you, have Greg, yeah. you have a whole bunch from what? last year, and... Well, there must be somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, we'll figure that part out. So is but, that, but is that what we want to do? I guess what I was going to say is we would have the band, right? Yeah. And then we'll have all the posters around, so the band will call for our attention, and all of our events will be on the side of the thing. It's like what we do for the children's Right, okay. So is this what we want to do? Do I have a motion that we will... Uh, I'd like to make a motion that uh, if we can get it all done in time, that we do have something in the Christmas parade. Okay. I'd second it. All right, all in favor? Yes. Beautiful. <coughs> okay, okay done. you're done. Bob, any other new business? Yeah, maybe this is as good a time as any. Where we're reconfiguring the budget committee representation. I would make a motion that at our next general meeting in the spring that we not put on the warrant articles any position that the budget committee has taken in favor or against any part of the budget. And I'm doing it for this reason. We are not an SB2 form of government. We're an open town meeting form of government. And only those who come, attend, and listen to the organs pro and con can vote and they vote at the time they attend and hear the presentation. So I think with that kind of a safeguard, there's probably not a necessary reason to have the opinion of the budget committee for or against any of it on the ballot. Thank you. Well, we never used so to. Why did we do it last year? We never used to do it. We agreed to do it last year, and I'm not sure what the Okay, well, right. no, So I'm was that, that was a motion? Yeah. Yeah. Do I have a second? Uh, yeah. All in favor? Yeah. Done. Yeah, no, I, I don't. I believe the RSA says say say something different. I'm sorry? I believe the RSA says something different. Which would be? need to bring them to the watch committee. No, I didn't say to bring them to them. Oh, no, no. So no. I'm what talking about writing it on the We will not, when we have the warrant, and the budget presented at our open meeting have the recommendation that of the budget committee for or against a particular issue or articles. That's <laughs> well, if you can show that it's legally inappropriate, I'd be more than happy to look into it. But we, we, we do go before the budget committee oh, yeah. to present our budget. Which we That's have not to what do. we're yeah. talking about. Yeah, we're not talking about that at all. Uh, we never no. had, Brian, we never had... Uh, um, it on the on the Warren articles before that I remember, and I've been here for nine years. So uh, that last year was the first year, and I think it's going to be the last. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on um, Mr. Chair, just say it. could you put an amount to the Christmas parade? No. <laughs> yeah. No, just some Oops, dollars. Well, we, we need have, Glenn. We I, I need to. We put two thousand dollars in a line item. For the Christmas right. parade, okay? But we spent all that fixing the wagon. <laughs> so and brilliantly done, if no, no, I may but say. I'm not, yeah, too. But all I'm saying is, Thank so you, you want to put another two thousand towards this project and put some kind of a um, money? I don't think it will cost that much, but uh, let's. 
um, take a motion to spend no more than two thousand dollars on the parade. Yeah, I don't think second. All in favor? Yeah, I don't think we'll okay. be there, Richie. We can put okay. it in, but I yeah, we won't. We won't have to spend it. Okay, no. So one other thing is on. I'm also on the board of the Chamber of Commerce. I'm the representative for the Village District. And next Tuesday, the 27th, is a, is a chamber meeting that I, I think is important that I go to. But also, the state of New Hampshire is having a meeting at the, at the um, conference pavilion. center. At the pavilion, the conference center here. Mm -hmm at 5 o'clock on the 27th, and I think one of us should I'll be there. That. All right, so I will be at the chamber meeting. I'll probably end up getting there after. I look um, forward to seeing you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> sounded sinister. <laughs> no, I meant it. No, <laughs> okay. So, all right, so if that's the case, and obviously if you want to go to, to that one, you can too, either, either way. But there is a meeting on the 27th okay. and uh, at 5 o'clock. It's at the, the pavilion, pavilion sure. the okay. conference center upstairs. Five and and the yeah, uh, no, yeah, five. five. Seven. Yeah, and they are going to be discussing the beach and what they did, and if there's anything, any ideas from people, or what could be done better, or listening to complaints or praises. So, if anybody wants to go, the state. The state. They have. The state. They have one in the spring. They have one in the, the spring and the fall. Okay. All right. Okay. So. I wasn't done. I thought I was done, but I'm not. No, no, you're going to I talk already about passed you on, but go ahead. Uh, no, I wasn't going to talk about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Uh, we have unexpended <laughs> funds in the uh, playground budget. That's helping where the wall particularly needed some work. That could that be addressed? Sure. Under that. I don't know if it's too cold to point. Does anybody know anything about cement and wall pointing or anything? Put, they put a chemical in it. All right, I'll get some prices on that. Yeah, I was going to do a little bit of painting in there, but I can wait till the, yeah, the spring because I think it's cold. You you have have you have have I know it is, yeah. So, we'll call it. so now when I go for bids, they know how much money we have. <laughs> just announced it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. That's a mistake. All right. Thank you. 750. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, I will. Um, you have Bill's number, right? He's, he's a hard worker. Yeah, he's a good worker. We'll give him a call, get some prices. Yeah, he's great. All right. Go back to you. Okay. Missy. Um, I, um, I wish Glenn were here again. But last year at the prom, when they get, what do they call? Do they have a name for that? <coughs> where they walk the across promenade? the promenade, march. Oh, march, the grand march, the, the grand, grand march. march. It's a lovely event. And last year we went, and and um, we thought maybe we would help the if if we had suggestions on how we might help them with the stage and make it a little more adorable. And um, so um, I'm going to have a meeting eventually with the two people who are involved with. Um, the prom this year, and uh, I, and I'll have Glenn involved with that with me as well, and we will talk about things that we can do to kind of spruce it up for them and make it even more exciting if we can. All right, all right, and um, I'm going to have you talk about the Halloween thing after we do the approval of the minutes. Sure. All right, so uh, approval of minutes from September 9th, 2015, page one. Page two, page three, and page four. Do I have a motion to accept the minutes from September 9, 2015? Move to accept the minutes as written. Oh, second. All in favor? All right. So on public comment, Kathy, do you, you want to go first? And um, then we'll open it up to everybody. Okay. All right. Hi, I'm Kathy Silver from the Blue Ocean Discovery Center, and um, we have an event coming up. On Saturday the 24th, we're going to have a Halloween party, 
And we're very happy to be able to continue the um, custom here at the beach. We know that for many years that the beach district had a Halloween party in the old fire station. And when everything kind of <coughs> changed around, that was lost. And so we had a ha Halloween party last year, and then we, we hope to continue to do that every year. Um, it's on the 24th from 3 to 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And it costs a dollar, that's all. And we will have snacks and crafts to do, and of course, our touch tanks. Oh, we have a new lobster since I was here last time. Now we have two calico lobsters. We have Freddie the freckled lobster and Calvin the calico lobster. But we have a blue lobster now. Wow. Yes, and his name is very imaginatively called Blue. <laughs> so, yeah, you haven't seen Blue. Oh, he's beautiful. He's like turquoise blue. We had a little issue with Blue and Freddie fighting, but that's okay now. <laughs> yes. Um, so, um, again, that's on the 24th from 3 to 5. And we hope that people um, come, bring their children, of course. Um, one of the highlights is we have a little parade across the stage with all the kids in their costumes, and they really like that. Great. So that's... What do you expect for a turn-up? Well, last year we had 60 people. Yes. So we're budgeting for 60, <laughs> yeah, at least. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. yeah. Something else I'd like to mention, it's um, really not anything through Blue Ocean, but last week... Um, I went to a workshop at Seabrook Beach having to do with sand dunes and flooding. And I know we've talked a lot about flooding here. And this was sponsored by UNH, and they very much want to come and talk to us. And Was this this Allison? Yes, it is. <coughs> yes. I'll, I'll email her so we can get her to yes. come for us. Uh, especially following up. I mean, we've been talking about flood, floods and the flood zone, and this directly applies. Um, People who have property right near the dunes, they will show you how to um, plant grass there to help the dunes. There's a garden at the state park where you can dig up the grass and then take it out and plant it, and they very much want us to do this. So I know, um, <laughs> I also, <laughs> at Winnicunit, um with the science club, and so my science club is going to come down and help plant grasses in the spring. I have a question. Did I make this up? Was there a thing that you weren't supposed to touch the beach grass on the dunes? Yeah, well. You, Is it, wasn't there a, a, you know, because I have a lot of friends who are on the end of Dover, Boston, right, right. down there, and they were, they could touch the dunes, yeah, the grass. Well, of them. course, we always have the issue with the plovers around there, too. Mm. Yeah, So that's exactly. the big part. But, yeah, I mean, well, I, I do know that, like, Wednesday, they had us dig up this grass, and then we went and planted it to teach us how to do it, but then it was fenced right off to protect it. So, and this is crucial. I mean, if we don't, the, the, the most interesting thought, thing I thought they did was they showed us pictures of Sandy Hook, New Jersey, of houses behind the dunes and not behind the dunes. And this, the houses that were protected by sand dunes survived. And boy, what a lesson. I mean, when you see these pictures, and that's what they want to bring here, okay. and show us that we have to keep these dunes. It's absolutely crucial. Okay, so that's it. All right. Don't Super. forget the Halloween party. Anybody else in the audience like to speak? I see new faces. No? Yes, I'd like to welcome these people I don't know. Hello. Hi, I'm Karen. Oh, nice. oh, I'm glad. Thank Welcome. You. Thank you. How are you? Yes. That's right, yep. Yeah. All right, anybody else? That's it. Eileen, come on. <laughs> Haven't seen you for a while. All right, well, uh, yes. At the where the marina is, uh, we live on Harris. Well, I live on Harris. They're crazy neighbors down there. Yeah. Uh, They're yeah. lovely yeah. people. Yeah. The marina yeah. with all their boats coming in and out and those heavy trucks. Uh, there's a pothole. I called the town like five times. Oh. How many times before they got down? 
just throw some coal pads there. Not like that. So where, 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 is it on right Harris? Trucks, right, right by the gate, right is the uh, whatever side of the marina. Right beside the big pink house. Oh. The pothole right there. Well, that's how oh, right in the corner yeah. as you're making the You corner. mean yeah. in front of it's the pink condos? No, no, the no, house. No, it's no. a house. Oh, it's not, house. It's, I don't oh, think it's oh, pink oh, anymore. Yeah. Oh, all right. All right. So no, no. Oh. I think it's a different color. That's the one right on the end. You're coming around. Fellows, Fellows the oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's in it's in the yeah. town. It's right not. There. I mean, it's not just a little. It's like boom. The front yeah. end of my, my I have a brand new suburban too. And right. It's like boom. Well, Public Works has been doing great for the beach, so I'll, I'll give them a call, see what they say. Okay, that was, that was discussed at the selectmen's meeting because the, uh, the town has actually taken over that. That used to be the back entrance. Right. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, but the town has taken over that whole section, and there was a little bit of legality of what do we own, what don't we own. But this is the stuff. street. They oh, know they own that. Ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, Whether no, they have the other thing or not. Week. Oh, Oh, last oh, so week they know then. about it then? Yeah. Well, so obviously you brought it up because they're talking about it. Yeah, good. That whole thing. Yeah. Is, but well, the street is another is. issue, though. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm glad somebody's talking about it, you know. Yeah. It's been several months now. <laughs> Weren't they going to fill it with the boat that it spent the winter there? Yeah. All right, on this notion. Actually, oh. It was so, I was so close. <laughs> All right. This is going to be real quick. All right. Brian Lappin, 27, I speak. Um, 32, colon 5, um, comma 5, A, B, and C does say that you have to bring any money on articles to the budget committee. We're not saying no, we're not. We're still going to do that. I'm we're bringing just, all of them to the budget committee. That's all I'm talking the budget committee. It's just the yeah. recommendation. recommendation. You know when it says warrant articles on the bottom, it says recommended by the, the right. that's what we're taking off. Yeah, no, because see what happens. It only has to do with any money ones, anything having to do with money that has to be under um, well, the reason B &D why. of that article is they have to come before the budget committee. But that's only money. That's all. Well, they may come before them, but it doesn't say anything about how we have to put down. Passed or failed yes. by them. We, yes, it does. Where does it say that? Read that to me. Right here. It says you have to write that on the. Yep. I will. Yep. Yeah, because I'm saying a notation of whether or not that appropriation is recommended by the governing body. And if there is a budget committee, a notation of whether or not it is recommended by the budget committee. Article B. If the article is amended to first person the meeting, I don't know. Governing body and budget committee. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I'm going. Is that an English? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what language was that, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> <There's a laughs> right. Oh, I'm sorry. D is, yes, we do have to make a recommendation. C is, we can say not to make a recommendation, but by meaning saying we don't recommend it. Right, that's fine. But the but question is whether we have to. Money. No, but the question is do we have to put it on the ballot or not? And I'm not going to argue with you either way. <laughs> what we're going to do is we'll, we'll look into it and uh, we'll, yeah. ask, uh, we'll ask the lawyer. Okay. So if we have to, we do it. If we don't, we're not going to do it. Maybe that's why she did it last year. No, I don't think it came up. It just kind of. We wouldn't just put that on, I don't think. Uh, Somehow. I, don't I think she must have suggested. We yeah. will check into that, Brian. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Maureen. The reason I was on there last year is that, no, I'm sorry, sorry Chuck, is that normally I prepare a ballot. Right. But because of the bond last year, yep. the wording had to be exactly right. She prepared it for us. Oh, that's what she did. See, that's why they got okay. it. Okay. Okay. And maybe that's the reason she put it, though. No, because it was a money issue, too. Have a great <laughs> weekend. <laughs> no, we're out of here. Thank you. We need to get